Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this first session of the Catch and Do series by Blue Morpho. The factory of the future will have two employees, a man and a dog. The man will be there to feed the dog. The dog will be there to keep the man from touching the equipment. This is a quote from uh, Warren Bennis. And uh, this is basically the answer that we want, uh, the question that we want to answer today. So are we ready to have a dog in our factory? So I am Regis Amlin, I'm CTO of Blue Morpho, and to co-host this webinar today, I'm with Geraldine Andrieux, CEO of Blue Morpho. Good afternoon, Geraldine. Good afternoon. Thank you for this uh, great session. And this webinar is recorded, and you will get access to the recorded versions. It will be online a few hours after this, this broadcast. It's an interactive section, a session, it's a workshop. As you will see, we will ask you a number of questions, and you will have the opportunity to share your views during the live uh, survey. Um, you can also share your thoughts live with the question that you have on a, in, the, in the chat box. Um, but I, I think that everyone is now um, quite familiar with this concept. Uh, if we have time, at the end of the webinar, we'll answer those quest questions or comment the questions. So before we get into it, Geraldine, could you give us, say, a few words about who we are at Blue Morpho and what we do? Absolutely. So I'm the CEO and founder of Blue Morpho. And actually, Blue Morpho is an innovation company. We are dedicated to deliver new concepts and support new companies to grow and to emerge, actually. And how we do that, we are working on new business model and new technology and also new collaboration mode. And we strongly believe that, and we know also that to deliver disruption, you need to, you need to work on what we call the bankable challenges, where there is the opportunity to generate new value creation, and also to work at the ecosystem level. So we are working with research organizations, startups, large corporations, private investors, and institutions. And we are quite active in deep tech. So uh, you have seen a very, uh, you have shown a very nice picture with a dog and, and a man. And the, really the question is, uh, that could be the future. That might be, that might not be. And our job at Bromorfo is to define the what could be the future and how to make it happen. And to do that, we have launched also this catch and do uh, sessions. Um, why, what does it mean? Actually, we know that when it's dealing with innovation, there is a lot of buzzword. And innovation is, is accelerating very fast, actually. So we have the feeling sometimes that we are already in this uh, new world, but the question is, are we really right now in this uh, digitization? Uh, what is the reality? And what are the real questions we need to ask ourselves? So we don't want to only uh, have uh, like a dream or to think that something will happen. We want to make it happen. So, and to make it happen, we need to know what is existing right now. What are the challenges, the real challenges we need to address? And as you know, as entrepreneurs, challenges and uh, are all opportunities. So we want to identify the problems and de deliver uh, the right uh, value and generate uh, the right solution for that. So that's why we are doing this catch part to understand what is going on, what to do, and then to be able to act on it. So this is a do part. And at Blue Morpho, we are here also to support you doing that. And as you will see also, we are a strong partner like DH Square, providing also very re relevant and interesting solution to act and to deliver uh, innovation. Thank you, Geraldine. And to our guest today is Jack Wayne. So, Jack, you are CEO of DOCP, and you have been working as CEO of Manufacturing SMEs for, for a while. So, thank you for being with us today, and good afternoon, Jack. Good afternoon. Many thanks, uh, Geraldine and Regis, to invite me, and uh, good afternoon to the audience. Thank you. So a few words about our sponsor today. So this uh, webinar is brought to you by DIH Squared, uh, we, uh, where we accelerate, accelerate factories through robotics. So as you may know, European Commission invests in robotics a lot. Uh, in uh, Horizon 2020, the budget for uh, AI-related area was 2.6 billion and 700 million for robotics only. But for the next program, AI and robotics will merge together and 15 billion will be allocated for these topics together. And uh, in DIH squared, uh, the funding, the project in itself 
as a total budget of 16 million and there's uh, opportunities for SMEs to get access to funding through DIH squared and because we have this uh, cascade funding uh, a scheme which was implemented in Horizon 2020 and most of the SMEs today are familiar with that concept. So our ambition is to make uh, robotic solutions more affordable. Uh, we want to generate innovations that maximize productivity and optimize agility for European SMEs and mid-caps. And as you can see on the map, we are uh, working as a network of DIH with extended DIH and that is uh, the whole uh, the whole picture is the DIH squared network. So, and just a comment, uh, DIH meaning digital innovation hub. So all resources you can find also across Europe to get access to technologies and competencies. And this is, I guess, what you are showing right now is <laughs> on this slide. Yeah, thank you, Jardine. It's true that we are uh, using this slang too often, and sometimes we forget to uh, to explain it. So DIH for the one who are not familiar with that is Digital Innovation Hub. So the project is led by VTT and you can see here all the happy partners of DIH squared where Blue Morpho is uh, part, of the, part of that. And um, yeah, so we, here is an example of a project which has been supported into DIH squared. It's a project which is uh, still in progress. Uh, the name of the project is Agile Plus. It's in partnership with a Spanish company called Bosonit. And uh, we are right into the topic of today because uh, it's about uh, manufacturing companies and pl plastic injection processes. So uh, I won't get into the, the details of that. Uh, we, won't, we will have an additional session next week. And add, uh, you have to keep to remain until the end of the, the presentation because uh, I have more information for you because we have uh, right now an open call. Uh, it's a two-step proposal and the first stage deadline is for the end of June. So uh, if you are interested in two industry 4.0 and robotics in general, so um, yeah, you, you, should, uh, you should get into that. So what about industry 4.0 in itself? Is it a vision or uh, we don't want that to be an hallucination? So, as you know, this is an interactive session and we want to start to interact with you and uh, we want to know how you are, how do you feel today? So, we're going to launch the first questionnaire. Uh, this is a kind of warm-up so that you can uh, understand uh, how to interact with the, with the tool. And uh, so, it's currently open and you can now uh, tell us what is your mood today? Yeah, the meteor is for you, so it's not outside, but how do you feel yourself? And um, and why we're asking you a question is because, you know, it's uh, it's always good to ask yourself, how do you feel? And also to, to train you on this uh, way of ans answering all the questions, because you will see, uh, as Regis mentioned, this is really an interactive session. So we're not here only to speak, but we are here also for you to ask yourself the right questions and to, to prepare also your question to Jacques at the end of the session. Uh, Regis introduced the DH Square um, uh, support, but if you don't know why, if you don't know uh, who you could support on how and why you should go to digitization and robotization, then it might not be a success. So this is everything we want to offer to you today. So uh, I'm still seeing that some people didn't answer yet on the meteo. Just play the game. It's uh, it's sometimes fun as well to um, to interact. We can't do that too much right now, but so let's try to do that. So what I can tell Regis is that uh, maybe I can you know share with you the meteo of today. And we are quite a, a sunny place with some clouds in some places. It's uh, raining somewhere and we have some storm, but as well as some snow. So quite European uh, meteo today. <laughs> okay. So the but snow, the snow we don't know. Yeah. yeah. Snow, <laughs> some people like snow, some people enjoy snow. So let's uh, let's keep that for mystery for the moment. So thank you very much for, for playing the game. Um, we have another question, Jardine. Absolutely. We would like to know more about you. We introduce ourselves, we introduce Jacques, and we would like to know who you are yourself. Are you an SME or a mid-sized manufacturing company? 
Are you a large manufacturing company? Are you a technology provider? Are you an integrator? Or are you the famous digital innovation hub you were mentioning just before? Um, why are we asking you this question? It's also, you know, to better address uh, the topics of today and to be able also to highlight some key points that will be more interesting to you. So again, we still have some people didn't uh, answer yet. Please do it. It's quite uh, important for us so we can also address the best way uh, this session of today. So, right. so actually, it's quite interesting. Uh, two more, and then I will give the the feedback. Okay, come on, come on, the audience. <laughs> <laughs> we want to we want to know more about Jack and uh, what uh, keeps him awake at night. So, it's important. Exactly. So um, maybe I will share as well if it's okay with you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting because we do have a lot of technology providers. So it, indeed, it's the right place for you to be as well to understand what the manufacturing company is looking for. We are also quite a lot of SMEs and mid-sized manufacturing companies. So thank you also for joining because it's quite interesting also to interact with your peers. So it's nice to, to have this interaction with Jack. And we do have also integrator. And we do believe that you will uh, see very interesting uh, solutions. And we will invite you also to join the next sessions on the 20th and 22nd of April. And we do have Digital Innovation Hub. So we have a quite uh, a complete ecosystem with us. And as expected, we do not have a large manufacturing company. So we are quite in the, in the target. OK, excellent. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, now we're going to get into the topic of today and with maybe uh, uh, more questions for you. We want to know what keeps you up at night uh, when we are talking about manufacturing or managing an SME. So uh, now you have understood how this works. We are going to launch a new poll. So please, Jardine, you can uh, start the questions. Um, so, so you don't know yet, uh, you don't know yet, Jacques, but you have seen it in like a few seconds. And the question we ask yourself is, uh, what could uh, keep Jacques awake? Is it like production challenges? Is it quality challenges? Is it customer challenges? Is it regulation and law? Or is it business development uh, challenges as well? So um, please enter, uh, and uh, you will see uh, at the end we will share your feedback after the when jack will have explained ourselves what so keep him uh, is awake at night and that's also the goal to understand what is the pain point of jack so two yeah. more uh, votes before i'm closing it i'm tap at this game you know i like you uh, to vote <laughs> yeah there's the same who are late the two <laughs> i know two who are late Okay, it's important because um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a gamification that we want to, to implement. But we want to compare, of course, Jacques has his own experience, but we want to compare what is uh, what we think uh, and what is a real life. That's why we ask you first, we discuss and we show at the end. So are we ready, Jardine? Yes, I give you the floor. I disappear. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so Jacques, uh, welcome again. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. So you have been a CEO in a number of companies, actually, in the past. So um, mostly small and medium companies. So could you give us a few words about the companies you have been working? What are the typical profile of the companies that you have been managing in the past? So profile was uh, small companies in, integrated in uh, international groups with 15 to 115 people working uh, in the plastic industry with uh, manufacturing parts, decoration, assembly of systems uh, for major, uh, major clients in uh, Europe and uh, US. Um, what can I say more? Uh, yeah, this. you had you have prepared a couple yeah. of examples to show what were the typical products. Yes. First, first example is it was for Gilson Group. Gilson was one of the fund major companies working in the water separation systems. Uh, they are, had and uh, all the market has a big uh, big activity with the COVID uh, uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, and uh, they are working on uh, QPC analysis. What we, where we uh, manufacturing in the 
Pure Lab Plastics, a company uh, in the Jura. It was tip. Tip is a small part in plastic. The weight is uh, less than uh, a gram. And in this company, we manufacture uh, 500 million parts each, each, uh, each year. Uh, the parts were done in uh, clean rooms. So manufacturing of plastic parts in uh, ISO 8 clean rooms and the assembly, the control was done in line in an uh, ISO 7 uh, clean room. All parts were uh, uh, manufactured under control. We have uh, standard control on the injection uh, for parts, and after that, for assembly, we can have several uh, several options. We can add filters. We can have uh, different uh, packaging, and uh, all the operation, the control in line with cameras. Uh, the assembly and uh, packaging was uh, under full uh, control and all the information from the raw materials, the batch order and uh, the assembly operation were uh, labeling uh, individually on each packaging. So you were a little bit of uh, vertical integration, you were producing parts and you were doing also some assembly and uh, because Gilson Gilson is, uh, is not a, a plastic company, but they own the manufacturing uh, manufacturing facilities. And yes. there was, and this was for the, the last... Uh, well, the, last uh, the last company, it, it was for uh, another group. Gilson was uh, working on only one market. Uh, I worked for another company which named, uh, uh, which named RGF Group, working on several markets with a lot of uh, customers. And uh, we have 20% uh, uh, of the turnover uh, in the medical uh, healthcare market. We have our own products. Uh, we have two lines, petri dishes on the left and uh, jars on, on the right. We're working from uh, energy market. It was more than uh, half, 15% uh, of the turnover uh, on batteries, on uh, switch or control system in order to, to manage uh, the energy. And uh, so on, on uh, domotics markets and sport and leisure. Uh, this company uh, was uh, has uh, four plants in Europe, three in France and one in Romania. Uh, both company was equipped with uh, ERP uh, integration uh, of, from the customer order to the delivery. And uh, what what I can uh, yeah, I think that, yeah yes. what is really uh, what is really striking here are the difference in terms of market volume and you had to switch from one market some uh, very uh, very highly regulated markets like medical uh, with a lot of lots of parts and and some low end market like domotics so uh, that's really flexibility agility this this is not managed the same way right Yes, that's not the same uh, managing uh, managing uh, all the day. For the first uh, example, the client was the owner of the company, so mm -hmm. we need to focus on production uh, range each each day. For the second case, it was uh, we have more than uh, uh, sixty uh, major clients, and we have questions all the day, and we need to to be good in terms of uh, deliveries, in terms of quality. And uh, we wanted to assure that all deliveries were in line with the customer needs. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it leads us to the, the main question. So uh, when you are managing such a manufacturing company, uh, what keeps you at uh, at night when you are an SME? What are the main priorities on your daily basis in your normal life? So the main the main priority is uh, to assure the business uh, with uh, customers. Uh, and to be sure that uh, uh, we will be the um, suppliers for next projects for these clients. And it's a, a daily, uh, daily challenge in order to, to have uh, the good deliveries, the good quality level, and to answer to uh, all new questions. Uh, we were last year uh, uh, stopped by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, and we stopped all the production. 
our customers uh, told us if we were in difficulty, if we can do uh, something specific in terms of deliveries and in terms of actions. And we were uh, very close to customers in order to be uh, the, the, the mm -hmm. supplier for, for the future. Yeah, yeah, your priority is really to manage a customer relationship to make sure that uh, you can, if you deliver them good today, then tomorrow you will still have business. That's really one, what's important. Yes. And then, and then, uh, what, what else? What about the production? Uh, and the productions, uh, the running productions, or yeah, what is your question? Um, yeah. What well, what is your second priority, in fact? Ah, is, uh, so. <laughs> So, sorry, the, the first priority is to deliver clients uh, in mm -hmm. time in full and in quality. The second one is to assure that uh, production and running is uh, uh, in line with uh, with the goals. Uh, we were monitoring uh, production uh, through two systems. The first one was a standard RAP, and the second one was a specific MES from uh, from Plaster. And uh, we are we were aware in order to to be in the goals to uh, order and reorder uh, in line with uh, customer needs. Okay, and yeah, and the and what about the business development? Is it um, an important problem? The, we can be good in terms of business development if we assure. Uh, a constant and a high level uh, service for the for the customer so we have to uh, deliver as a request we have to uh, give the better quality for for parts and after that the customer is uh, in complete confidence we can spoke about business development if you don't have these three uh, items uh, checked you can you can go to the next uh, the next step. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what kind of discussions do you have with your customers? So when you are um, when you're talking about the, the daily business, the customer challenge uh, challenges all the situation in order to have uh, more flexibility, uh, in order to have uh, smallest matches uh, in delivery, uh, to reduce uh, the quality issues and be in fact more more flexible and the most uh, constant and uh, challenging and challenging way for customers is the cost reduction program so they need uh, each year to reduce from three to five percent uh, why they can't explain it but i think it, it will be in order to be uh, better than their own competitors and uh, mm -hmm. you as you as a supplier, you need to 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 say, okay, we have to find solution. We have to design or redesign process or products. And if you don't uh, uh, agree, and if you can't uh, uh, go if to this target, this reduction, yes, then it's dead. You, you, dead. You, you, your colleagues, your competitors, uh, win the project, uh, mm -hmm. and you. You will uh, you will lose the new developments for for your company. And what about the Industry 4.0 um, initiative? Do they have any expectations with regard to Industry 4.0? Um, I think that customers as us doesn't anyway know what is really uh, the smart industry or industry 4.0 uh, attendees. Uh, they work in the same way that uh, a few years ago with the quality uh, uh, new new rules, uh, and um, they ask us as as supplier to to go in this way in order to save uh, in fine uh, money. I think that uh, if we as supplier are, uh, are working in a good way and reduce all. Uh, or wasted, uh, they think that we will be in line in order to save uh, money on their project. Okay, thank you, Jacques. Um, I think it's time for us to look at what the audience uh, thought about what could keep you up at night. So, 
Uh, we see that the number one, Jarlene, can you help me? It's a little bit small for me. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> exactly. Uh, actually, no, the, the, the oh, most important so was business development for, for our attendees right now. So they believe that the, the what keeps you up at night, Jack, is business development, um, yes. followed by production challenges. Uh, they don't. They don't believe that regulation and law uh, is a challenge at all. So no, nobody checked that uh, that answer. So first one, business development. Second, produ production challenge. The thir third is quality challenges, and the last point was customer challenges. So for you, the customer challenging remain the, the one of the top priority. Or how what, how do you react to this uh, feedback? Would I you consider what, what what difference you make between business development and customer challenges? Uh, business development is a point of view of the of the supplier. Uh, if we <coughs> are in line with uh, with all uh, requests uh, KPIs uh, from the customer, you can uh, access to the new business allocations. Mm. Uh, for example, we were working on projects which have a, a lifetime from six to seven years. So it, uh, it it might that you have to replace fifteen percent to twenty percent of your of your process or of your products each year. So the business uh, development is very challenging because uh, if you do don't access to uh, all the customer requirements, you have no business and uh, your turnover is going uh, down. Yeah, so it's very related to the life cycle of the product you're producing, basically. Yes, yes. Uh, and to, production to, to challenges, yeah. yes. For, for me, production challenges are uh, a standard uh, organization for each uh, company. It's not really what is uh, important. The uh, important uh, way is to have new businesses in order to be in, in, in order to have a good, uh, a good, uh, what is the name? Mm -hmm. French uh, rentability. Uh, profitability, yeah, yeah. Yes, profitability, profitability. Even you, you can manage any uh, change, any move in your company. Right, so customer yeah. first. Yes, customer first. So to, um, yeah, Jarlene, if you can close this window, I have a short wrap up here to share. Um, okay, so to wrap up, first priority, manage the customer relationship. This is uh, the customer's goal, and uh, this is one asset. You want to maintain your score because every uh, supplier is called. And at the end, um, the supplier is like a black box. They don't really care about how you do things. Uh, they just want to be delivered on time with quality. So um, run the production according to plan, it means uh, to deliver for you. And develop the business. You mentioned that 15 to 20% of the business needs to be replaced every year due to the life cycle of the products, which is in the range of five years. And the cost reduction is a very tough challenge. You have this program every year, you must cut 3% of your cost. Okay, that's uh, very good for the introduction. So now we have to, to talk about the second, uh, second step. What is the status of industry 4.0 into a manufacturing SME? So uh, let's ask the audience again. So Geraldine, let's launch this new poll. Absolutely. Actually, it's quite interesting because in this first part, we mentioned customer first and the challenge is really the customer relationship and delivering to the customer. When we speak about Industry 4.0, we are more at addressing how to produce and uh, what could be the production challenges. So we would like to get your point of view uh, in the audience. According to you, what are the main drivers for Industry 4.0? Is it the abilities of new technologies? Is it the regulation? Are the customers the drivers? Are the quality systems the driver or is it the competitivity? So again, play the game. Uh, it's nice also because then we can compare. And that's quite good also because we can see the difference between what we all think before getting the feedback of Jack. And then we can compare also 
what we saw before and what we have learned uh, from uh, the the um, Jack experience as a CEO of uh, SMEs, manufacturing SMEs and mid-sized companies. So and I give you two three more seconds. Yeah, yeah yes. we have three questions to run. So, so I close this one. That yeah. was for the main drivers, okay? And maybe you want to go to the second one, which is the obstacles. So we yeah. have a look at the driver. Let's have a look to the obstacles. So according to you again, it's really based on your own analysis. What are the obstacles? And is it the lack of data? Is it the lack of preparatory skills and competencies? Are the implementation costs the main obstacles? Is it the lack of economic value? Uh, or is it the sentence, if it's not broken, don't fix it? And uh, there will be a third question. About the so matches. I'm just waiting for uh, people to fill in. The last, the last two. <laughs> the last two answers. <laughs> but it's nice because you see what kind of uh, points we would like also to cover during the sessions. And of course, in the audience, if you have additional questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the question box. Yeah, sure. We will be happy to interact with you at the end. So, I go to the third question, and then we're gonna we're gonna ask questions to Jacques only. So, what is the maturity of Industry 4.0 in manufacturing SMEs? So that could be tricky, right? Is it yeah. digitization, digitalization, or is it AI adoption? Yeah, maybe we have to explain. Um, yes. Here we describe Industry 4.0 as uh, a cycle. Uh, the first step is digitization. Basically, you move from pen and paper to the computer, and every data is uh, recorded and stored um, digi digitally. And the digitalization is when you start to use those data and to uh, produce some actionable um, information uh, where you can uh, act and react from the information that you got from the data. And the last one, uh, the last step, the ultimate ultimate step would be when uh, we have this dog watching your production, and that's the AI adoption. Uh, AI adoption is seen as the ultimate uh, ultimate way to run a factory. So where are we? And um, I think we can um, continue our discussion while people are, are replying. So Jacques, um, let's let's move to uh, industry for that zero. Um, did you um, did you start really uh, industry for that zero, and why? Why is it because you had some great technology to deploy? What was your motivation to deploy uh, these kind of systems? The first the first motivation uh, is. Uh, quality uh, control and uh, the ability to to produce uh, uh, in line with the plan. Uh, today, uh, in, in small factories, you have uh, a system, which is uh, the UAP with uh, numbers of data, and uh, these data uh, will uh, will conduct the production uh, organization uh, from the supply. Uh, yes, it would be better. <laughs> with, uh, yeah. with the show. Yeah, just uh, for, for the audience, yes. we have prepared here a, a slide which explains the quality system that was implemented into a previous uh, factory of yours. Yes. In fact, this is the standard, uh, standard flow for production process. Uh, we receive uh, customer orders. Uh, we don't produce uh, in the same time because we have to to check if orders are in line with uh, what uh, are the commercial conditions. Uh, and after that, uh, we have to answer to the customer in order to say yes, we can do this uh, this orders in this time. After that, you have uh, plenty of uh, information uh, in the UAP. Uh, uh, coming from uh, the Kanban, coming from your supply chain, uh, coming from the process and machines availability, are you people training, and so on. 
and uh, you can see that uh, all of these informations uh, will uh, uh, give you supports in order to to plan your production. Uh, moving from uh, standard production to production uh, in industry 4.0 means that you your information have to be uh, recorded uh, and have to be managed uh, with uh, have to be managed in real time. Yeah, uh, so what? all the all the yellow crosses or orange crosses that we have here are the spots where you create data and you store data in real time, right? Yes, that's right. This, this data comes from the development uh, process when we, we, we were spoken mm -hmm. with your customer to to the path definition, to the production conditions, and mm -hmm. to the delivery uh, outputs that you need to, to add uh, on the parts. Mm -hmm. After that, yeah. you, Does any, you in fact, you have an equivalent chart for the uh, for the development yes, yes. process. For the development yeah. process. Yeah. After and that, when point. you start in production, all is uh, under control, and you have to manage your production as well as, well as possible in order to deliver your customer uh, finally, in terms of quantity mm -hmm. and time in full, in terms of quality, uh, and uh, you, 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 in the standard process with uh, ERP, you, you have uh, information and you follow, and uh, you can say if you are good or not good uh, in mm -hmm. your production. Are there still if, some uh, pen and paper steps in there, or is it 100% uh, digital? Uh, in fact, you have a mix uh, of both. Uh, orders are given uh, by paper. Uh, yeah, this, the this production, arrow. yes, this, this, this arrow. Uh, the supply chain uh, uh, and the raw material uh, and component uh, uh, supply is done with uh, the same uh, the same way. You have a. Uh, uh, paper given to the warehouse, we, which uh, will uh, supply the, the components to the production. Uh, in terms of uh, HR, HR uh, you have a matrix uh, with people training or qualification, but there is no uh, interaction between the production plan and uh, the, the, the data. And for process and machine, you can have machine equipped in order to have uh, uh, all the, the information in terms of uh, rolling of production, but for maintenance, you, you have uh, uh, some papers. The producer said uh, we have problem. You have to to mm -hmm. check and to to repair the machine. So you have uh, and all, all that is already connected to the ERP. And uh, do you already have the capability to visualize your key performance indicators? Yes, for the main production uh, machines, you will had you can add uh, an MES, uh, which is uh, in line and fully uh, interfaced with uh, ERP. And uh, in time, you can see if the machine is uh, running in production, if there is a change of production, what will be uh, the next production on the machine with a global uh, uh, planning flow. Uh, but uh, in order to, to go through the industry.4.0, uh, you miss information uh, because you have a sensor or information on the main production machines, but you don't have the same uh, from uh, the peripheral systems. And uh, you can have, uh, you can't have in terms of drift information, uh, which are going in a global uh, system of uh, data management. Mm -hmm. you, you have the data, but you cannot see the drift. That's what you say. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, and what about so? What about the MES? So, this is an organization which is typical for an SME. So what size? You mentioned between 50 to 150 employees. So yes. uh, for an injection molding company, how many machines do you have in this uh, workflow? It's uh, 
on this on this workflow, uh, including an EMS, it was uh, 40 to 50 injection machine. If you mm -hmm. have less uh, machines, around uh, 15 to 20, uh, the management is uh, very different because you don't have MES, you work on a small series and uh, you can uh, have information on each shift or each day with uh, recording on uh, uh, data, uh, recording data files in an Excel sheet, for example. So if for more, small... more, yes, yeah. more that you are running big production, uh, more you have big issues if you are drifting uh, in terms of, uh, of production. So you think that below 15 to 20 machines, uh, an MES is not necessary? Uh, it's uh, always the same uh, the same problem. You have to put from one side, from one side uh, how is the cost of the MES and what are what are the the result uh, and uh, uh, what is the payback on this investment. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we are running a little bit of out of time, so I think we're going to to skip uh, the next question. So there was, you explained me that you have developed uh, in your previous experience some IoT-based applications which are not related to, uh, not related at all to the production. Could you elaborate on that? Um. When uh, when we discussed about the the utilities, how you have been able ah, to okay. monitor yes. the utilities? Okay. Uh, in one previous company, we were on the same site. Uh, sorry, we we have two companies uh, working on the same site, and as a question was to pay uh, the energy, electricity uh, as uh, used for each company. Mm -hmm. So we managed we manage to, to have the information from all the utilities. Uh, it was uh, the machine injection and uh, assembly machine it was coming from uh, compressed air for cold water, hot water, uh, we add some sensors in the in the system, and we are we were in, uh, in, in we can we can measure uh, each on each uh, production of uh, energy on this site what is the real uh, consumption and to report uh, this uh, this information in the global system. So, so you uh, could, uh, in fact, you were measuring the power consumption in real time so that you could split the bill between the two companies. Yes, and yes. At the was end, the first, there was the an additional M. outcome to that. Yes, the first aim was to, to separate the bill uh, uh, between the two, the two companies. What we have seen is uh, that we have managed to reduce uh, some uh, some energy uh, drift. Uh, it was on uh, uh, comprimed air, and in six months we reduce uh, the risk cost for fifteen percent. And uh, the, the it was a good uh, a good way. The second uh, uh, the second ah, sorry. Uh, we we have another problem uh, when we measure each uh, production. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was about the uh, the Monday uh, electricity. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, it was, we had a peak of our power consumption every Monday. Yes, in fact, we we have uh, uh, measuring each uh, at each moment. Uh, we have seen that uh, we have another another load. Uh, the Monday, Monday, Monday morning, when all the machines, it was 80 machines on the site, when the machine was starting at the same time, and uh, we modify and uh, we adjust the, 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 the sequence of the start of, uh, of the week, and we, we will be able uh, within two months in order to have no over, overload charge on the Monday morning. Mm -hmm. yes. 
And so but you were not really language. expecting you were not really expecting this uh, cost reduction at the end. In fact, mm -hmm. you were you yeah. were surprised yeah. you were surprised to see that yes. just by monitoring you could improve. In fact, when you monitor anything, you can say uh, there is a problem at this point uh, in particular. Uh, mm -hmm. The first. Uh, the, the most important thing was to separate uh, the bill between the two companies and uh, monitoring everything. We, we have seen some drifts and we have managed to reduce uh, these drifts uh, as well as possible. Okay, so thank you for, for sharing this uh, information. I think it's important to see that there are two worlds, the production itself and the utilities around. And we have seen that since all this system has been put together uh, gradually, uh, there's no real uh, unification system on top of that. And it's just one layer of uh, improvement after the other. Uh, so Charlene, could we have a look at uh, what the audience uh, thought? About Indeed. This. Yeah, so when it deals with the driver of the industry 4.0, we have a, a, like the same ranking for availabilities of new technology and competitivity when customers are considered uh, less important and uh, quality systems and regulation very uh, not con considered as driver for industry 4.0. Yeah, and that's really interesting because if we uh, wrap up, um, I can explain that at the end, since we were here working to the medical domain, uh, the quality system and the traceability uh, really was of most important because you had to record every information that's uh, that's the regulation in fact if you want to be able to deliver the traceability to your customers you need to record and that builds the foundation for industry 4.0 because you have the data uh, and in fact uh, as long as the customer doesn't ask for it you don't really um, see the points and unless the competitivity is at stake that's uh, the main the main uh, outcome of this discussion right now. Um, so what were the main obstacles? So the main obstacles are according to our audience today, the the implementation costs came first, then the sentence if it's not broken, don't fix it, and then the lack of preparatory skills and competencies. Uh, according to our participant today, the lack of data and the lack of economic value are not real obstacles. Uh, okay, so in fact here we have kind of an agreement between the audience and, uh, and uh, what we have discussed. The cost of implementation is really a problem because even 5,000 euro is a problem for an SME. And we would put that at the same level of uh, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Uh, there was also a little bit of skepticism on the value proposition because, as you have seen, uh, the motivation to implement IoT for uh, the management of the utilities was more to split the bill at the beginning and uh, have a paper use uh, 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 separation of the cost. Uh, but we were not expecting such a huge saving. Uh, at least there were some skepticisms. And 50% of the power consumption of an SME, it is in the range of 100,000 euros. So for an investment of 35,000 euros, that is uh, really worth uh, the, the, the expense. And indeed, the internal skills is also one of the problems. So, and what was um, the last question? But the current status in uh, Industry 4.0, the current maturity. So according to our participants, 54% uh, of them consider that digitiza digitalization is the current maturity of Industry 4.0. And AI adoption is not there yet at all. OK, oh, that's so interesting. Uh, well, we'll get, uh, we'll get into that uh, in a moment, uh, because we are now uh, entering to the last uh, section of the um the this this show this uh, webinar how can we, we improve uh, yeah we have one question and i just mentioned it so maybe during the presentation we can address it it's how important it is to go from capex to opex with consumables just for you to have it in mind uh if um if you want to okay. answer during this session okay 
Okay, that's really important indeed because that's part of the business model. I hope we we still have 10 minutes in this webinar. I hope we will have time to, to cover that. So then we have two final questions for the audience. And which are how to how to reach the next steps. So indeed, we um, we are in the, we have seen that we are um, the digitization is almost done. And let's say it's almost done because you need to record the data to follow your production. If you don't have that, you're working blindfolded. Um, the digitalization is something which is in progress. We will see that in a moment. And we are not yet in AI, and that is true. But uh, we will see also that we still we have a little bit of AI uh, already. So how to reach next steps? So here we would be happy to know if you have uh, some suggestions to do, if you have some ideas that you would like to promote, and if uh, DIH squared can help you for that. And um, the question about DIH will come just after. Here we'd like to know if indeed if you have solutions idea, if you are looking for solutions to address your customer expectations. If you have no ideas <laughs> at all, uh, if you'd like to know more about this topic of uh, smart manufacturing, and uh, if you realize that finally this topic is not for you. So the, the good news is for the moment, uh, we have no answer to I have no ideas, and uh, I realize this topic is not interesting to me. <laughs> so if you have a strong interest to go further, uh, both it's quite interesting because we have both company looking for solutions and other able to answer to solution so really please fill in uh, this uh, this uh, part here because then we will be happy also to help you to do not only to catch the what is important but to to act and to be able to offer your right solution or to find the right solution and maybe i can ask the next question yeah let's do it now and if you didn't have time, don't hesitate also to put it in the in the question box because indeed we'd like to know if you could be interesting about DH support. Uh, Regis introduced briefly at the beginning of this session. If you'd like to apply to the call, meaning that we will uh, provide you with more information, of course, and uh, or if you just want to have more information about each square, or if you're not interested at all, so please uh, fill in uh, this question as well. The goal is really to make this uh, this hour spent with us quite efficient for you. Maybe two more. Maybe I uh, do. Can we go on on the uh, when people yeah. are still answering? So, the next question is how can we improve all this? We have seen that we have a lot of data generated. Uh, we have in for some situation a visualization in real time of the production because this is uh, about uh, the traceability, which is very important. So, um, is there anything that can be done to further improve the system? How, how you said uh, it a few minutes ago, if you have no indic indicators, you are blind, you can't manage your production. Uh, today, you have systems uh, which uh, are using SPC, SPC integrated uh, uh, cards as uh, injection machines. The last generation of injection uh, machine has these systems. The difference of, of uh, the actual uh, status and the status in uh, industry 4.0 is to use and to integrate this uh, SPC card as a drift on temperature or pressure uh, as a, a good tool in order to manage your production. Today, this information came uh, too late. You are out of the specs. The machine stops or alert the technician, which is uh, going going from uh, another machine. If you can uh, inline uh, modify your your uh, your data or modify the, the the drive of the the machine, you can uh, say it. Uh, it's a good managing system because you use information and uh, you uh, modify your condition of, uh, of uh, manufacturing in, in line. Uh, so you collect the data, you collect the data, but you don't really process it. So do you yes. consider do you consider a machine learning algorithm or AI to fine tune the processes? Uh, 
it will be I, I think it will be difficult because we have the main machines uh, you have peripheral systems uh, for example in, in, in injection machine you have uh, uh, water chillers in order to, uh, to have the good temperature in the mold uh, if you have a, a shift from the standards values uh, on a standard chiller, you can say uh, after two or three hours when the, the operator takes the part and says there is a deflection, uh, it's too late. You lose uh, two to three uh, hours of production. You can add a new system. You, you have new chillers with uh, interconnection with the injection machine, which can say uh, we are out of the, the target, so uh, you have to cut, uh, to stop uh, to inject or you have to go uh, further in order to to see the, the deformation uh, in time with uh, control uh, integrated in online it will be in camera for example and in this way you can say uh, uh, the, the production is running good but uh, you in this case you don't uh, use uh, AA in order to 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 pilot your production you only uh, have systems in order to say my production runs good for the moment. But are there any uh, artificial intelligence already into the injection machines? I think that in the next uh, generation for full drive electric machines, our suppliers uh, uh, integrated uh, these types of uh, of systems because on the SPC cards uh, on the standard machine you can all, you can have the result in saying it's good or not good and you stop the machine on the next generation you will have correction in order to adapt all the parameters and to say uh, we are in good condition for production and that's the same way that's not the, the supplier which is manufacturing parts that uh, have this uh, knowledge of uh, AI, but the supplier of uh, your machines in the same way for the, the that we, we have seen a few minutes mm -hmm. before between customer and supplier. Supplier knows how the parts uh, have to be done uh, and the injection machine uh, knows how the process uh, can be managed in order to have good production. Mm -hmm. So in fact, the, the dog is entering into the farm, but it's just watching the machine. It's not watching yes. the full farm. Yeah. No. Okay, that, that's interesting. I wanted to talk about uh, intralogistics. Uh, the project that you can see here, it's, this slide is a project which is called FEATS. It's uh, from Dalma Systems and they perform some intralogistics. They just replace people instead of people having to move uh, so the raw material from the warehouse to the different workstations. You have an automatic uh, machine, mobile robot, AMR, which is, uh, which is doing the job. So would you consider that as an improvement into, your, uh, into such a facility, into an injection molding uh, manufacturing company? Yes, it could, it could be, we, we have the, 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 the warehouses are, uh, what I said before, the supply for material on uh, the injection machine can be, way, can be done in two ways. You can have an automatic system in order to deliver for each machine a good quantity uh, of material, but on small uh, companies, uh, you will have, you can have a change, a daily change of uh, type of, uh, of material and you need to supply uh, on each shift uh, different materials of different colors. Uh, the, people with, the, the people which is in charge of this operation can uh, make three to five kilometers each day in order to uh, to supply material in the machine. And it will take all the day bags from 15 to 20 kilograms. Uh, it will have problem of uh, itself. So this system can help. The second uh, key point is that uh, in this case, you will have a full traceability. So it's an automatic system. 
coming from the warehouse to the injection machine, you can say uh, we have to process with uh, FIFO, uh, we have to, to process with the same batch orders and the batch, uh, the lot number for the, the, the material can be included automatically uh, in the batch order. So for quality, it would be good. For health, uh, it will be good too, uh, but we need to, to with a social uh, problem too, with this machine can take the, the, the work uh, for one people, I don't know. Mm. Yes. Um, I, I wanted to, um, to you to, to use the question that was asked by someone in the audience that uh, Jarlene just mentioned. Um, we, we are running a little bit out of time, so I want to, to use that question and, and then move next to the conclusion. So how important uh, is it uh, to, uh, to move from CAPEX to OPEX? Here we are talking about the robotic solution. Sometimes a robotic solution or an IoT solution, it's an investment, so uh, it's CAPEX. Um, it will be an investment for you, so it's a center of cost but you will make some savings on the operation, on the OPEX. So is it something that makes sense to, to move from, uh, from CapEx to OPEX or do we need to think of smart business models? Um, I think and it's uh, the same way for, for everything in, a, in, a, in a SMA, you, you have to use a good flow uh, to be sure that uh, your flow is uh, is uh, uh, optimized and after that you, you have to to manage to to see what is the difference uh, between the people use the machine use and to make a global calculation but um, yes the region, yeah, the region is possible, basically it's, it's possible. Po it's possible. Yeah. What, what I can say is that this type of system uh, costs uh, less today than uh, five years ago, so it, mm -hmm. it has to be inspected. Okay, so yeah, so um, I'm sorry because we are really running out of time, we are already behind schedule, so uh, just to mention that this uh, concept of, uh, of um, uh, automatic warehouse management or connection to the ERP system. Uh, it could be a perfect combination with this uh, Contra 2.0 product, which is also developed in DIH squared, which is a demonstration of just-in-time production. Uh, so this is an MES, which is designed specifically for uh, small and medium-sized companies. And in the frame of DIH squared, we have connected a KUKA robot, not myself, but the, the company ET in Poland has connected this KUKA robot to their Contra 2.0 uh, MES system. And that makes uh, an affordable uh, solution for an SME. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, really, everyone, for your contributions. Thank you, Jacques, again, for, for all your valuable insights. Um, we're going to get back to you in a few days from now because we have two great events next uh, next week, uh, which are uh, showrooms for the DIH squared uh, project. Uh, the, on the 20th of April, we have uh, five projects which will be showcased. So it's a networking tool that we have. So some of you might already have used it. Uh, so feel free, uh, we, you're going to receive um, the information on the technical program and we will be happy to introduce you. So we will have Demcon, Introsys, Malone Engineering Group, FlexX and I know how for the first session. And on Thursday, uh, we will, uh, so this is another example, I will switch, uh, skip that for the moment. On Thursday, we will have the second showroom where we will have Dalma Systems, RoboJob, OptiDrive, ET, Accenture and Bosonit. And of course, if some among the audience we have people who are who want to apply to the uh, IH squared, so uh, feel free to join the networking session. We will be here to answer your questions on how to apply, uh, how to build your consortium. The best advice we can give you is to contact your local DIH and to check out the, the DIH squared 
um, network and you will find your local DIH involved into the into the project. On the 22nd, uh, next week, next Thursday, we will have this event in just before our workshop uh, for everyone in Romania. Uh, so you feel free to scan the code and to register to the event. And uh, uh, if you want to apply, the first thing that you need to do is to go on to the dinsquared.eu uh, open call website. And uh, you have here a number of useful links that you will find again uh, during the, uh, in the in the slide deck that will be handed over. So uh, helpdesk at dihsquare.com. You can also contact our partner at the Funding Box. And to apply, you need to apply directly to the Funding Box platform. So we will have, this is the end of this session. So thank you again for staying uh, until the end. Um, and to both for your participation to the, to this audience, uh, the next session will be the Impact Week. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, this is a great event that we already had last week. Uh, so stay tuned for mid May, uh, where you will you will have the full program available. So thank you, Geraldine. Thank you, Jacques, and thank you to the whole audience. And thank you thank very you. much, Jacques. For, thank you, Jacques, for sharing your insight and your experience. And it's really great to have a, a representative of uh, SMEs in Europe, the manufacturing SMEs in Europe, to get your the real challenges. So thank you very much, Jack. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. If anyone wants to, but go ahead, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, many thanks uh, to you, Geraldine and, uh, and Regis, and uh, have a good day. Yeah. yeah, so Jacques, you are consulting uh, for uh, execution into SMEs at, uh, today. So uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with uh, Jacques, we will be more than happy to make the connection. So thank you again and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Have a Bye. good day. Bye.